posting uh, the uh, web page for the book. How to um, explore different features or different ways to manage your uh, user database in the system. So um, this will be more of a um, discussion and overview, if you will, rather than uh, different specific fields uh, that we deal with in the different menus uh, regarding users for this particular uh, case. Uh, however, it's more uh, generic, uh, general terms of uh, what can we do in different scenarios that we have to deal with um, on a day-to-day -day basis and an ongoing basis in an access system. So uh, that's what we'll be discussing here today. Um, just give me a moment here. I'll put up my Atrium system on screen. And here we go. Uh, so a couple of questions that came to mind uh, when I want to, to uh, help you understand um, is manage a database. Uh, one of the things I think that's uh, apropos currently is how to deactivate a uh, a bunch of cards, if you will, a bunch of users in the system you know, as quickly and fa as fast as possible. Now, we already uh, know if you're familiar with the product, there is a lockdown option that's available to you that will disable readers and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so that's one alternative that you could use, one solution. Um, other ways, if you haven't enabled lockdown in the system and you still want to uh, restrict access, um, I think from the get-go, I think we need to um, prepare the system for these scenarios. And it's not always, as you know, very well know that, you know, what's going to happen in the future is uh, up in the air. We don't know what's going to happen. So we can only do so much preparation. But one of the things that we can um, do in the system to help mitigate any of these emergency scenarios to be able to better control the situation is creating access levels. Uh, you're grouping people you're grouping users in the system. So the term that's used in our products are called access levels. Other um, access control uh, solutions offer uh, different terms, access groups, uh, user rights, or different terms that are used. So um, building and uh, the defining uh, groups in your system of users is an important aspect of being able to manage that system. Now, in this particular scenario, um, the groups that we're talking about, we can use this, and as I was saying, in the atrium system, the term that we use are access levels. And my idea here is uh, the scenario, uh, we have some people that uh, we need to uh, remove, deny access, whether it's because of COVID-19, uh, which is today, it might be a, a wildcat strike, it might be tenants uh, that are not paying, these all situations can be similar as to we want to deactivate their accesses. So uh, one way of doing this, I think a quick way, is in the, um, I'm in the web browser. So if you go to the configuration menu of the web browser, go to the access levels menu. Now, by creating access levels, and I will be uh, giving a, a webinar in the next week or two uh, regarding how to create access levels and we'll be talking about schedules and holidays and all that so managing uh, different parts of the rights of the users here we're assuming that everything is set and how do we manage these users once they're set so we'll be delving into how to create these and for now they are created and for example we see that the IT personnel access level has been uh, is not active it's not checked green if you will if I go into the um, properties for this, we'll notice that the state of the IT personnel access is set to inactive. So this is the key, if you will, to be able to modify a whole bunch of people. Whoever has IT personal access for their access rights will now be able to access according to the access level itself. Now, what are the access rights for this? in the web browser window. So I have my IT personnel access. It's in the areas tab that we will find in which doors or which um, parts of the building will they be allowed or denied access according to uh, the different schedules that they have in the system. So with that said, anybody that has IT personnel, I want to deny them access. I simply set 
the access level to inactive. Now, whoever inherited that will be denied access when they swipe their card at any of the doors that they had access to. Now, if you prefer or, uh, other ways of doing things, if you want to restrict access, you can simply modify, restrict access, we'll put it back to active, to only certain areas in the building. So maybe now the service entrance will be the only entrance. So the lobby, we're going to deny access. You can modify the actual access level itself. So within a few short clicks, whoops, we'll put that to never. The only door that anybody that has IT personnel access will be able to access in the building is the service entrance, and it's at 24-7. Now, these are different ways to manage your system. Maybe if I follow my thought process here, so right now I'm in the access level menu. I can activate, deactivate the access level. I can also modify the access level to my desires, to my needs. Another option is access levels rely on schedules. So depending on the schedule, when will you be able to access that particular door in the building? So the schedules themselves are another option to be able to modify their access rights. So here are my schedules, 24-7 uh, access. If I want, I can deactivate that. And voila, my managing of this particular group of users, whoever has access 24-7, they're, they're using that in their access levels. They're using the schedule. Well, that schedule has now been deactivated. So any doors that are using that schedule and their access rights, um, they will not allow access. So modifying your um, access levels themselves uh, by setting them to active and inactive or here in the schedule menu, setting the schedules being used by these access levels to inactive or active. This is a very quick and easy way to be able to uh, modify the access rights of a group of people in the system. If you want to do it individually, uh, you can also do the same thing, of course, and in the user, so different users, a particular uh, tenant that didn't pay his rent, uh, uh, membership scenario, you got to re renew your membership before you can come back in, that kind of scenario, employees that have been uh, put on waivers, uh, that kind of stuff. So if you want, you can individually, first of all, set a user to an inactive, and that's it, that's all, you're done with this particular user, he will no longer be able to gain building access. If you prefer, uh, you can also go to the user and go to his access levels menu and disable his access rights. No access level, he no longer has access to the building at any time. So disabling the user, the modifying the access level that user has, uh, these are two other options. So as you see, there are several ways to be able to activate and deactivate users in the system. If you have groups of users, you've developed and defined um, access levels, that is an easy way to deactivate an access level, and that access level applies to several users in the system. Uh, so managing users in that scenario, uh, adding and deleting users, uh, once again here, to add a user, you click the plus button, and that's pretty straightforward. You'll issue the user a card, and then you'll give that user an access rights, and that card will start working according to the access rights issued to the user, that new user. If you want to delete a user, I want to take a moment with that. Uh, so let's say here, I have a Gildo that's in the list here. I'm going to delete Gildo. So once I do this here, so I've selected the minus sign, and now I choose which user. And if I want, I can delete multiple users and click delete. OK, now the card that Gilda was using is no longer active. However, what I want to bring forward, that card is still in the database. It's just no longer assigned or associated to a user in the system. So the card that Gildo had We've deleted Gildo the user, but his card is still in the system. So just to give you an idea here, if I create, um, say, uh, I don't know, let's say Jennifer. Okay, 
And um, we're going to give her a card and create her. She's going to be the person that replaces Gildo. Um, so in the cards menu here, I can create a new card, but I also have a card that was available. And the card that Gildo had was named this particular number. So I'll assign Gildo's card to this new user in the system. Now, you also notice in that list there was a visitor card. So you might want to, if you want to manage visitors in your system, you can create a visitor user. Okay, I've got caps locks reversed here, excuse me. And if I can spell in English, visit T-O-R with a nine. Oh boy, it's COVID-19 here. <laughs> Visitor user, okay, and uh, this user, uh, we don't have a visitor. When a visitor shows up, we can come into here and go to the user visitor and assign a card that we've reserved, if you will, in the system for this particular user. Once we've done that, we could have created a visitor access level, assign a visitor access level to that user, uh, so on, so forth. So let's say just um, business center access. Okay, so this user is in the system. When the user has done the visitor, I should say, is leaving the building, we can simply remove the access level from that user. And click yes. If you want to follow through, this is an option that you, whether you will or not, either way, if there is no access level for the particular user, the card will not be granted access anywhere. So we're still there. Or if you prefer managing it in a more uh, uh, detailed uh, perception, you can unassign the card for that visitor that we just added. Maybe we have a personalized name here. So these are different ways to manage your users in the system. Adding, deleting, associating cards. Now, the key to the deletion is when you delete the card, that the user, the card remains in the database and is available to be reissued to another user. If you want to really delete the card itself, after you've deleted the user, you'll simply go into this menu here, go to the cards menu, and here we're seeing the list of cards that are in the system. Now, what I'm looking for, I know that we gave Gildo a card. Um, I want to see who is associated to the different cards in the system. This is where I can associate the cards in the system. And simply, for example, delete that particular card, that particular card in the system. Oop, on here and assign it. All right. Now, I want to move forward and show you a bit of the software. Um, questions that come up to mind, uh, I think that can be useful uh, to manage the system, is to have a list of users. So in the software database, uh, we're in the user database right now, so here's my window. Uh, very straightforward information. Um, the columns that we see in the list here, my user database, these are all, um, Clickable, if you will, where if I click on the header of each column, what I'm creating is a filter, if you will, to group the, for example, access levels all together. So give me all the access level always users together. Or if I prefer, I want to see the list of users according uh, alphabetically according to their last name. So by clicking, what you're doing is sorting ascending or sorting descending on that particular field. So if I use the first name, okay, the activation date. So these are all different ways to be able to glean different bits of information uh, from your database. Uh, if you want to be able to uh, save your database, uh, that kind of stuff, uh, what we could do is print a report of the users. Now, the print option will generate my report. And I did detailed, and we'll show you the differences 
So in the detailed option here, per user, will give you all the information associated to that user that's been input into the system. So the user's name, uh, if he has a card, what card number, and uh, what we're showing here is per user, it's one page at a time. So if I scroll down to the next user in the system, uh, this particular user is the administrator user. Um, he's, uh, he has the master card, here are the cards. He has a, he's the master card uh, owner. That's the card number itself and so on and so forth. Does he have access? Does he have a login? Um, what other operator rights that he has? So this will allow you to export. You can either print it or you can save it in a PDF file, an Excel file, and so on and so forth. So if I do Excel and I'll call it user report. Uh, yeah, I already had one. So let's just replace that existing one. So on my desktop now, I have my user report in Excel format. And here's my report. So I could uh, store this on a USB drive, on a network drive, and have all the information to be able to uh, glean uh, the card database, the user database in this particular system. Uh, other scenarios that might be of uh, interest, especially at this point in time, I'll go back to the software here, get the report off screen. There we go. And uh, the access level menu. So here are the list of users uh, in the access levels. Uh, as we saw before, we can, in any access level, enable or in the web browser, we see active, the de uh, deactivate, activate, deactivate. Here it's enabled, disabled. Okay. Um, another uh, situation that we want to maybe manage databases who are the users that have this access level? Who are the users that have this access level? I'd like to have a report regarding these options. So, with the access levels window here, we can go to the print button and print out the details of the access levels themselves, what times, what uh, doors, and so on and so forth. But this particular scenario, print the users assigned to the access level. So if I want, I can choose all the access levels. That's all the items in the list here. Or if I prefer, I can do it one at a time by selecting the selected items over. So here, what we're seeing is according to the access level, so the business center access, who has access to that, uh, who has that access level, the access level always, who has that access level, the programming access level, and so on and so forth. So for each access level, you'll see a list of users that have that access level. Once again, managing our database is the context that we're dealing with here. Um, following up, uh, last I would say last but not least, uh, next in line, if you will, uh, in that same thought process, we want to know who has access to this door in my building. So I can select particular door if I want, go once again to the print button and print the door access rights. So if I select this particular item only because I highlighted the garage parking, I just want that one. Give me all the users in the system that have access to the garage door. So we see here the administrator, the programming user, John and Jane and the weekend security guard. And we list what access levels permit them access to that, to that area, to that door, and at what times. Okay. All right, I just want to minimize this on my screen. See if I can get that off screen, excuse me. Um, Technical details here with the Windows display. There we go, that's what I wanted to do. Voila, like magic. Okay, so um, these are the generic ways to be able to manage your users, uh, printing out a list of users that's in the user database. Uh, the print option, 
uh, use your print option in your different menus, uh, your access levels. And if you go through the access levels, the print option, if you go to your door menus, your print option. Okay, so that gives you a generic uh, tour, if you will, of how to manage users in the system. In a couple of weeks, uh, not next week, but the following week, I will be delving more into um, schedules and holidays and um, their access levels, and we'll be exploring those different pieces so you can put all the pieces together and eventually come to a point where it'll uh, minimize the amount of administration and day-to-day -day activity that you have to uh, attribute to the system by properly building your system according to the needs. Okay, well, um, that'll be all for today. Thanks for being here and hope to see you again and uh, stay safe, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.